One of the most common questions that I receive on a regular basis as a gig worker or a food delivery driver is if gig work is actually still worth it in 2024 and if it's sustainable. Well, my lovelies, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. Let's dissect the food industry and this year as a gig worker and see where this is going to get us. Last week on The Dash with Ash, I spoke to you lovelies about customer satisfaction and within being a gig worker, how sometimes I find truthfully that that's not something that we can obtain to because of these companies. But are these companies something that we can obtain to to make money throughout 2024? Or has gig work just simply gone down the drain? Well, let's deep dive a little bit more. So let's start off with my truth, okay? My truth when it comes to being a gig worker is absolutely things have shifted. I started getting involved in the gig work industry late in 2021, around November or December, so pretty much going into the new year. And I could remember back then, two years ago, and it wasn't just because there was the pandemic, although that could be just straight up a leading factor, but I remember when I could go out and easily make $30 plus per hour by doing gig work. And the fact that it didn't matter if it was morning, noon, or night was a huge principle for being a moneymaker. But if I'm going to be honest, let's fast forward to now. We are currently February of 2024. And in my opinion, the gig work industry is simply not the same. Now, it's really hard to pinpoint what is and is not the same for somebody that started in 2021, considering the fact that we were within a global pandemic. But I can say this much. Gig work has significantly changed. But do I think it's non-sustainable? Well, I think that's based on everybody's different situation. I have expressed how in my market, which is the South Shore of Montreal, how personally, in my own opinion, I feel that gig work is not sustainable full time. Some people might challenge me on that, and that's okay, because we all experience different as different gig workers. Myself, I'm mainly on Uber Eats, and I have skipped the dishes as a backup app. But if you're on the South Shore of Montreal, and you have DoorDash first, and then Uber Eats, and then maybe a third app, of course, it's going to be to be expected that you're going to make more money than me. And I would say that still brings your assessment versus my assessment as a fair assessment, because as independent contractors, we have the independent right to run as many apps as we want, do this game the way we kind of please, although, yes, there are some ground rules, But it's acceptable to say on the South Shore of Montreal, you can make a full-time income and do well. But in my point of view, I feel like you can't. And that's my favorite thing about the difference of opinion. I am super happy to hear that some people in my area do make good money and feel that full-time is sustainable within my market here. I'm happy for it because that makes me believe that gig work is definitely sustainable. And in an overall opinion, I do think it's sustainable within two categories. Side hustle, which side hustle to me is typically less than a part-time job. And then part-time, which part-time in my opinion is typically less than 25 hours. So if it's in these two categories and gig work still ranks two out of three categories in my book, then absolutely, I have to say that it's still sustainable when it comes to 2024. Now, if, for example, part-time gig workers in my area, based on my opinion, started getting less income and we got one out of three going, then I would say it's not sustainable. But because I still do gig work part-time anywhere from five hours a week up to 25 hours a week, I would 100% say that it's still sustainable in 2024. Now, I know that I just said for up to 25 hours in my category, 
but that is part-time. But I might be blonde, but I'm not too dumb because I do know that part-time actually goes up to 37 and a half hours. So why did Ash just say up to 25 hours of part-time? It's because pushing past those 25 hours means that I have to fulfill time slots now in gig work that can be dead zone areas or dead zone time slots. So for those 25 hours, let me do the math for you. I work four days a week, typically, if I go out for gig work. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And my main time slots are 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. So right there, we got 20 hours. And then what I additionally do is I tend to work about one hour to one and a half hours throughout the lunchtime shift. The reason why I say 25 hours is because in between those time slots or before or after or what may be, I find it's not as sustainable in my market, in my opinion. And again, I'm happy for those that it does. So I say for part-time for me, in my category, it goes up to 25 hours. Even though I know part-time can go up to 37 and a half hours, and then you're hitting the full-time nodule, I'm just giving my point of view based on the hours that I fit in, that my maximum cutoff for gig work is 25 hours based on the days that I work. Now, if you followed my YouTube channel, which is now where this podcast is dominant on, then you would know that for me, I would say that if I'm securing less than $18 an hour every single time, that's when I'm going to call it quits for gig work. Obviously, I want to keep pushing forward because of YouTube and everything else, but the gig work itself would not be paying if I'm less than 18 an hour. Luckily, for those 25 hours, it is rather easy for me to make over $18 an hour. I can still make $23, $24. I've even made $27 an hour on a regular consistent day, more than one day during the week. But if gig work ever became a problem that during a five to nine o'clock shift, I couldn't even make $18 an hour on the busiest nights of the week. Absolutely, I would say that gig work would not be sustainable this year in 2024. But I'm very lucky to say that I have not hit those numbers. I believe there's one thing that we have to keep in mind when it comes to assessing if gig work is sustainable. And that's that everybody's market is different. We are constantly glued to other gig workers for opinion or gig tubers to watch. But with them all being in different markets, X, Y, and Z, it's not a fair assessment. Don't stop doing gig work because your favorite YouTuber who's a gig worker tells you, we shouldn't be doing this anymore, guys. It's not sustainable. Go out and find for yourself. I can turn around and say, for example, that I don't like shop and pay, so I disable it. But I would never turn around and tell you to fully disable it because you need to go out and explore that by yourself. Gig work is sustainable if it's sustainable to you. But if you go out and you try it and you can't make ends meet, then it's one thing to say, for me, gig work is not sustainable in 2024. But painting a general picture of, is it sustainable? That's something that needs to be narrowed down more because the more we keep watching it, the more we believe it before we even leave the house. At the end of the day, when it comes to being a gig worker, you can still definitely make some money in your market. You just got to try it. It's a dead end job if you make it into a dead end job. I still don't encourage full-time because of so many factors, not just based on the time slot that gives you basically no money, but that's just my opinion said out loud in an open book. But I will always believe in one thing at the end of the day, you gotta do what you gotta do. And if you like full-time, if you want full-time and you do full-time, go at it. I encourage it. 
But the only thing I will say is don't get discouraged by others saying it's not sustainable. Try it and figure it out. Next week on The Dash with Ash, I'm going to be speaking to you lovelies about pay per hour and how I'm actually concerned about that even coming to any area. I'll catch you lovelies in the next episode.